So we're going to talk about CMS engine today, or whatever you want it to be. Um, go ahead and hit the next slide. How many of you guys have used uh, Refinery? How many of you guys like it? Cool. So that worked. Um, what do you guys think of Refinery? What don't you like? Super heavyweight. Okay. That's true. Anything else? What don't you like about Refinery? Yeah. Oh, oh, let me tell you. Next slide. <laughs> It's heavy, like, like you said, it assumes too much. I think it assumes way too much. It assumes what kind of search, full text search algorithm you want to use. It assumes what kind of blogging style you want to use. It assumes what kind of authentication system you want to use. Um, and it's slow. And I really hate its admin panel. In tabs, when you have a, a big application that has 15, 20 of them, it just doesn't really work. You're kind of you just lost. So, next slide. What do you guys want in a CMS? What's your ideal CMS? WordPress. Yep. SharePoint. Okay, why WordPress? Anybody can figure out how to use it. Yeah. Just tell them, Google it. Everybody has instructions that are ready for your level. That's right. That's true. Big developer base. Lots of plugins. Yep. Lots of plugins. You can pay somebody else to update it for you. <laughs> themes. Yeah. Themes. I like themes. No. Nice. Thanks for themes. Rails themes. That's sweet. Okay. So next. So. I finally got pissed off at Refiner and I said I'm going to make my own because I'm sick of this crap. So what is SPUD? First off is, is the CMS, can be, login can be, is it a, is a shopping cart, if you want it to be. Rails is built to be modular already, so why aren't we making CMS engines that are modular in the first place so we can drop it into an app we already have. We say we have an app that renders whatever we want to render, say just a, a solution, it has an application piece, but we have some static pages we want to render. We don't want to have to fight with it all the time. We can just inject this. So, next. We built SPUD to be extremely modular. Or all of us did, I mean, I've worked on it, Greg's worked on it, Westlake, um, Dustin's worked on it, a few others. And we said, well, let's just start with an admin panel. Let's make the admin panel you need to use and let's make it central so that all the other engines are using the same style sheets and the same basic structure. So that's what we did. We went ahead and added authentication, but we've designed so that we can split it out eventually. It's not there yet, but it's there. And we added permissions, because without our permissions, we don't want everyone to be able to access every module in our CMS engine. Next. Then we built a CMS engine. We said, what does a CMS have? A lot of them assume that they have a blog. Not every site has a blog. We don't always need a blog. So we have page management, menu management if you want it. It's all configurable. And templates. Templates allow you to basically change your Rails layout or add on to it with, um, it has a code mirror. So you can add on like short little chunks of code if you need to to an existing Rails layout. Keep going. And then. Uh, <laughs> Blog, blog <laughs> management, news management, categories. I mean, we've always we've all got blog posts and categories, RSS, and it's configurable. So, all these are built independent. So, if I want just a blog, I can have just a blog. I don't need to use a CMS engine, or I can fork it and roll, roll my own into SPUD. Um, same with the CMS engine. So, we built several of these. We've actually got two sites that are already using it pretty well. Uh, I don't know what the next one is. There, there they are. Many more. We got inquiries for um, contact forms. Say you want to roll custom contact forms or have multiples of, say, a property management site wants to suddenly add a work order form. Add it in there. Add the route to your menus. You're done. Um, event management. We want a calendar or multiple calendars. We can do that. Search. Search right now uses uh, um, Axis Index, which it's horrible, but for a basic site, it works. 
but it's really easy to add your own. You can make a few changes and you're using Sphinx. So, so that Spud Media is paperclip, supports S3 storage, all that. And then we're working on a, Greg's working on a photo gallery. Um, I'm working on a shop, so product management, product categories, active merchant, active shipping, and more. I mean, this is open source, so you guys can use it how you want. Make, make whatever you want. It's pretty easy to add engines to it. That's, that's what we did, the admin application. A few lines of code, you can just say, add this to the admin panel. And it automatically handles your permissions once you add a mix in, and you're good. So that's what SPUD is. And I have kind of a preview of it, if you guys want to see it. There's also some links if you want to find it, browse, and try it out. It's kind of cool. There's a lot of other things I didn't mention. I mean, we've integrated action caching, full page caching on a lot of those gems. Uh, uh, sitemap indexes on a modular basis. So they can automatically add them into the main sitemap. And uh, you can go out and pull it. This site is also on um, spud-demo.herokuapp.com if you guys want to play with it and change code. I have a backup, I guess, now, so play. <laughs> Did you, you use that to be accessible on your models? I used protected, actually. <laughs> Ooh, but that was on the user model. I'm sorry. Challenge. Now I'm going to use accessible. Yeah. So, challenge accepted. Yeah. I thought of that right after this. It's like, great, now I'm going to try to hack it. So here we go. Um, I gave you the password, so I mean, I made it easy. Get it in. Um, so I got some links on there to some of the gems that's going on, and there's the admin panel. Um, go ahead and go to About. Page that's using the CMS engine and portfolio. Portfolio. And then that's just a few of the sites using it already. Um, the blog engine, basic blog engine. You can always override all these views. You just add them to your main route and you're good to go. You can always copy them over. I think actually blog has some generators that allow you to just copy them just like Finery does a little bit. Um, but everything's separate. So the gem file is not. It's, it's a little longer than Refinery, but it's not not that bad. So go ahead and open um, events. Got a nice little event calendar. This one's still in, in process a little bit, so we have a little work to do on it. But start it. You can contribute to it, report issues, whatever you want to do. You filter. Uh, contact form is an example of SPUD inquiries. There's a contact form that, that we're using. I also did this demo on Twitter, Twitter Bootstrap yesterday. I was up to 11. I like bootstrap. Um, we'll go ahead and do the control panel so you can see the admin panel and what it looks like. And this is we're, this is still in a work in progress, but does pretty well. You've got page management, blog management, and in user management, you can turn these different quote admin apps off for different users, keep them from using them. And um, okay, I guess I have my user. There's also a super admin account that just bypasses all that. And yes, it's protected. <laughs> Make sure. Um, you go ahead and jump back using breadcrumbs dashboard. And we got menu management. Um, you can't. You don't have to use that. You can turn it off. All this is configurable. But there are a lot of cases where sometimes you you make a page or you need a contact form. It's not in your page list, right? So use menu management. Make your own menus. Use. Um, News, news posts, media, queries, that's, that's pretty much spud right there. And actually, if you want to pull up the jet file, it's pretty, pretty simple for this basic app. That's it. That's pretty much all it is. Some of those don't even need to get out. We had a bug with uh, rail ties install migration, so we had to use that for a little bit. But. So what is spud CMS install? Just like the kind of. Spud CMS by itself, yeah. uh, core, and that's it. Spud core and itself. I think Spud core is its only dependency. You have to check Ruby Gems, double check that. But um, core you know, includes what? Spud what? Spud web. Spud web. Use a basketball. 
Yeah, but I mean, the idea was to keep it lightweight on its dependence. Um, right now, there's there's one in there. I'm going to get rid of its breadcrumbs on Rails to do the breadcrumbs. It's probably going away. But the whole idea is we don't want to have too much dependence on a ton of gems. So there's no Haml. There's no CoffeeScript. You can use it if you want, but there's no sense in having it on your base base app. It's unnecessary overhead for when you don't need it, and it's if something changes in that, then someone's got to go update this to make it work. So the idea was to make it a little less pain in the butt on that. So any, anything else? Any other questions? What's your favorite module? Uh, CMS is my baby right now. It's been working on it like crazy. Um, yeah, CMS. So do you want to, I mean, Take over. You want this to be more popular than Refinery and, and I mean, compete with Refinery and all of that? Eventually, I mean, it's open I mean, source, so it's not yeah, I don't see why it couldn't be. I mean, the whole point in doing the open source is that I'm not the only one contributing it to it. Mm -hmm. We've got three people now, but you know, it's nice to have that community that can say, hey, there's a bug here. Oh, we need to fix it. Um, we've done our spec tests. I think Core has our spec unit and controller tests, and um, CMS is partially completed on that, has most of the unit tests, but not all the controller tests yet. Um, and that's in a little bit of a transition, because used to, we, we needed a test app to run them, but we changed the layout of the gem structure so we can run it online. So, that's pretty nice to use. We've, are, we've caught ourselves a few times with our spec. Performance is awesome on it. We've basically took the time to optimize it without caching first. So, I mean, I've gotten it as low as 20 milliseconds up to 60 milliseconds on a basic CMS site. With everything going on, all the DB queries that have to happen to build the menus and pages. Um, that's on Heroku on a dev dyno with shared database, so it's not too bad. And it supports full, ca full page caching if you want to use it, or partial caching, action caching. And, uh, I think you can kind of see some of the configs in the, uh, you know, the environment, RB and configs, the main one. There's some of the configs you can do. Um, the wikis on each individual gem, there's a configuration thing that should tell you how to configure it or what you can do. You can set base layouts. Um, CMS supports multiple content for blocks if you want to use them. So if you got one that's two column, you want to use sidebar, main content, cam. And you can also set them up in templates, so if you don't want your main layout to have that, but you have a couple pages that do use that, you can change your page template and it will use that. So, yep. Anything else? Yeah, tell me about this uh, editor, the layout editor, or the template editor, I should say. Where is, yeah. where is that using? Template editor is using CodeMirror. This is a bit of a work in progress, but it does pretty well. Um, you basically set your uh, base layout and um, Used to this had a home layout, but I changed it back because I made some changes to the home layout so I could use all one. But um, you can set your page parts, and these will create tabs in the page management with the nice HTML editor and um, future markdown. I think we're adding markdown and a few others, so you can do multiples. Um, CodeMirror allows you to basically um, override the default show HTML on the page render. So. If you want to override it, like in this case, I put in a span block, it's kind of silly just to show it. Mm -hmm. And I think it also hides the title, the default page title, if there's something in there. So that's what it did, but I mean, we've used it a few times. You can add, um, say you need to add some JavaScript that runs on this page, you can throw that in there. But it's not meant to be a place to edit your full it's layout. <laughs> It's meant to be a place to add like little snippets. Say you have two columns, you just need that extra line of something to change it. You throw in that, and that's fully um, Ruby interpreted. You use full percent equals the whole thing. And inquiries let you build your own custom forms. Thank you and all that. Anything else? being defaced right now as I speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I got. I mean, if you guys have any thoughts or questions, feel free to ask.
That's it. That's it.